Um, okay, Fraser Rankin says, I'm stuck with my squat. My quads are small. Could I build mass with a leg press, hack squat, then transition back? No. If you want a bigger, so right, if you want a bigger leg press, just go and use the leg press. But if you want a bigger squat and you've identified the weakness as being tiny legs, which my weakness was, all back and hamstrings and arse and no legs, uh, you need to alter your squatting to make that part of your squat stronger, right? For me, what I did was started squatting up more upright. So I just brought the bar back down and my back is small but lower. Started squatting more upright. I was doing squats to parallel and keeping my knees forward on the way down and forward on the way back up. I still practice that to this day. Then when I went back full depth squats, there's absolutely no issue. You need to make your quads strong by doing squats, but by doing squats effectively. And then when you go back to whatever style of squat you want, you'll have stronger quads. The problem is you might build some mass in your quads when you're doing a hack squat or a leg press. If you're not really building strength that trans that's transferable, like in a leg press particularly, or in a hack squat actually, when you're pressing with your legs, like you're in a fully rounded over position. So you're 45 degrees, the legs are, are never going to lock out so you're standing fully upright. So what you have is you have a hip flexor unit that's in flexion. You also have like the top of your quads aren't ever engaging fully because they're just kind of pushing away from you in a 45 degree angle. So it's not it's not as transferable a skill. You're better to actually build your squat by using a squat, just squatting with better technique or a more applicable technique to what you're trying to do. Great. He's wondering... How does one figure out if hypertrophy blocks are effective? If, I love this. If your weights stay similar and don't have access to advanced body scanning equipment. I love this. So if you, what you'll have to use, right, is the, you have to assume results from increasing in weight on the same exercises. Probably the best way to go about this. So you could also use the mirror if you look better. That's probably one of the prime goals of that. Unless, so if you're looking for hypertrophy in terms of, for using for sports then it's a different scenario if you're using hypertrophy for aesthetics you can just simply use the mirror until you start looking better that's a good place to start but if you keep your technique consistent the exercise selection the same if you can progress weight with similar reps as you started with or if you can get back to a place in six weeks time if say you start with bench press four by ten and 100 kilos and you return in six weeks time back to bench press, but you can do 105 by four by 10 kilos. There's an implied result from that that is very, very likely that you are or will gain muscle mass from the increased load with the same sets and reps at a higher volume. Um, what are you gonna think? I was going to say, so obviously hypertrophy is a huge thing for off season athletes. So it's something we deal with all the time. And because their weight might be going up and down with like water loading or what phase of training they're in, weight isn't always the best. But you can get a seamstress's measuring tape, the kind of yellow cloth rubbery measuring tape. You can get that for like two euro in a pound shop. And you do like bony process here, bony process on your elbow, mark the halfway point and you get a circumference here. You can do both arms, do the exact same on your quad, bony process on your hip, bony process on your knee, halfway point, get a circumference. And you do those measurements every week and write them down you will see very soon 